everybody, welcome to One Identity's Cybersecurity Trends and Insights video series. I'm Darren Thompson, Vice President of Product Marketing, and in this series, I'm going to be interviewing the thought leaders of cybersecurity so that you can hear directly from them about the challenges they're facing and perhaps how you can overcome your own challenges. Today, our conversation partner is Narayan Sharma. Narayan is the Global Head of Identity and Access Management, as well as Cyber Defense Platforms at Tata Consultancy Services. Narayan, welcome. Uh, perhaps we can begin with you just describing a little bit more about your role in the organization. Uh, first of all, thanks, Darren, for having me today. Uh, so if I uh, need to quickly introduce uh, TCS, uh, TCS is a global leading IT services consulting and business solutions provider. Uh, we have partnered with world's largest businesses to help them in their IT as well as business transformation journeys for 50 years now. TCS is a part of Tata Group, which is India's largest and most trusted multinational group. We are more than 500K people working across 46 nationalities. I am with TCS for over 25, 21 years now and I'm a part of TCS Cybersecurity Unit, which employs over 13,000 consultants across the globe. Uh, TCS Cybersecurity has various offerings like uh, governance, risk and compliance, cloud security, enterprise vulnerability management, identity and access management, IoT security, and so on. Uh, we also have platform-based um, business uh, which offers as a managed service to customers. Uh, I am globally responsible for the service strategy, uh, running the COEs, PNL, as well as the delivery governance of identity and access management and TCS Cyber Defense platform services under TCS Cybersecurity. Uh, and these are the two core services that we have, which bring in uh, the significant revenue for TCS Cybersecurity. So that's about me, a, a long timer, a practitioner in cybersecurity, Darren. Uh, so happy to, to be with you uh, in this conversation. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Narayan. And thanks again for being with us. And, and certainly, you know, with the global scope and sophistication of, of your services, I'm sure our audience can learn a lot from your experiences. So, so why don't we start with the general cyber threat landscape? A uh, lot's been happening over the past couple of years uh, on a global basis, both technically and, and politically. Uh, so what are effects of the, the changes in the cyber security landscape have been having on your business and, and the solutions that you deploy? Sure. So from our perspective, we see the evolution of cyber threat landscape in past couple of years in a number of different ways. Uh, one, we see increased attack surface driven by cloud migrations, rapid pace of digitization, which was driven by the pandemic, as well as the supply chain side of risks. Uh, another uh, trend uh, uh, that we see or the evolution that we see is around the increased sophistication in cyber attacks. And we saw, saw that through solar winds as well as log4j um, attacks. Um, similarly, there's an increased compliance requirements in regulated industries, right? So which is mandating company boards to take note of security resiliency uh, or cyber uh, resiliency. Um, as you have seen, the US government has mandated federal agencies to adopt zero trust based approach for cybersecurity resiliency. And governments and organizations across the globe are following the suite rate right, for the obvious reasons, as they see the value in following the zero trust based uh, approach. Um, on the other side of the technology, we see the advances in quantum physics, right? That is driving um, the planning towards post quantum crypto. Um, to protect uh, from uh, crypto attacks um, uh, on the, the the algorithms that are there in the use today, right? RSA and all that, because with uh, quantum coming into picture, uh, that will make some of these algorithms vulnerable to attacks, right? So we are seeing the organizations are exploring while some of these migrations to technologies and advancements would take some time. But we are seeing the planning towards that in some of the uh, mature industries uh, where they are investing into cybersecurity. That's that's really so, interesting. A any any idea on on sort of timelines around the quantum piece, Narayan? I mean, we've been talking about quantum now. I can remember for at least a decade. Um, yeah, what are you seeing out there in the field in terms of where we really not need to start thinking about quantum very seriously? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we see varied thoughts there. There's no kind of one uh, specific timeline that the analysts are agreeing on, but uh, it is somewhere around five to 10 years is the horizon when we would see the post crypto uh, algorithms, they would be in the walk and uh, the organizations would start moving their existing crypto investments into the newer algorithms. Right, right. So I'm sure today's audience will be really want some takeaways from you. So why don't we talk about the priorities for the CISO today? What, what would you say are the three key priorities for, for a CISO that's best trying to protect their business in today's threat landscape? Yeah, so in terms of priorities, as we saw, however, the threat landscape is evolving. If I need to uh, put them under a few buckets, right? One is because of the um, the the uh, company board's uh, interest into the cyber resiliency because of the regulatory aspects of uh, those industries. Um, the end-to-end -end visibility is something which the organizations are looking at as far as their threat landscape is concerned, as far as how well are they protected is concerned, right? So that is one broad bucket where the customers are looking at how uh, could they really implement solutions, right? Seek advisories. To, to get that end-to-end -end visibility into their threat landscape. Mm -hmm. Second is about the security assurance and compliance. Um, and that brings in um, how well are the organizations prepared um, to, uh, to, to uh, manage uh, the attacks that might come their way and how well are they aligned to the compliance needs that they have. Similarly, um, the enabling the business transformation, right? While security has to play a very silent role and the back-end role, um, many of the technologies which drive that transformation while keeping the business secure um, is another bucket where the organizations are investing their efforts and time. Um, so if I need to then map this to the CISO's um, priorities, um, if you talk about the transformations, as I talked about the zero trust architecture based approach that the organizations are taking in, while CISO has priorities across the board, right? Be it from the visibility standpoint, be it from the assurance standpoint, be it from the, the, the security solution standpoint. Recently, we see a lot of focus that is being put on the zero trust based um, initiatives. And as a part of that, um, we see the approach, the zero trust approach is getting quite identity centric for obvious reasons. Because in cybersecurity, identity is at the center because that drives the visibility into um, where the attack is coming in from, what kind of identities are getting um, uh, leveraged or I would say misused right within the organization. And uh, that helps to really tie in um, the whole attack uh, chain. Um, so that's where we are seeing organizations taking the identity centric approach to their zero trust initiatives. And various customers are at various, um, I would say, maturity levels uh, as a part of their uh, zero trust journeys. And as a part of that, uh, we see they are looking at ensuring provisioning of right access right uh, to the right people at the right time. So it's all about you need to get the access right. At the same time, we are seeing a lot of privileged access that drives a lot of automation, especially using non-human identities as well as human identities because human identities still need to really administer systems and need to really uh, manage some of the very critical and sensitive business applications. Uh, the third aspect that the CISOs has, have to need to look at as a part of the zero trust solutions, which have to bring in the controls which are more risk-based, which are more cost uh, context aware and solutions which will enable the granular access for their workforce as well as partners as well as their consumer identities to their critical business applications. All in all, what we see um, CISOs investing um, their priorities um, around how could they get their zero trust initiatives right, right? And if they are more identity driven, um, how could they drive some of these um, mandates or some of these objectives, right? Um, by bringing in the right solutions, right? By bringing in um, the right approaches, um, the roadmaps that they need to really uh, drive uh, these, these their vision towards. So yeah, essentially we see a lot of focus on identity and access management as an area 
to enable their zero trust objectives. Interesting. And, and, you know, we're certainly seeing that same kind of demand in our customer interactions at One Identity. One of the other challenges or, or uh, you know, trends as, that we're seeing as well in identity is a requirement really to start to bring identity technology together to, to unify that technology sometimes into some kind of a platform. Uh, what do you see the future holding in that regard? And, and why is unification of these technologies so important, do you think? Uh, to, to, to clients? Yeah, so um, identity and access management, right? I mean, it is full of technologies. It is full of tools. And traditionally, we see customers uh, taking a very siloed approach, a very standalone approach to implement a particular part of the solution, right? And um, that has um, its own, um, I would say, the downside in terms of the technology data that it might create you might not have the visibility um, across the board when you talk about unifying the identity view uh, across the control set that would enable the zero trust vision for the organization. Um, so in that sense, um, we see that customers are looking at how could they unify their identity and access management strategy uh, with a solution which could do that more seamlessly than, um, than trying to retrofit the, the solution components, which uh, might uh, over a period of time again create a technology date, or if they need to be replaced, uh, there could be a challenge in doing that. So with that in mind, um, uh, we, we certainly see customers are looking at how could they bring in identity governance and administration side of controls, working hand in hand with privilege access management controls, so that even privileged identities could be managed um, uh, that the entire life cycle could be managed um, with the right visibility and control. And uh, also integrating with um, the, the controls around the change management as in ITSM, the SIEM side of uh, the controls, right, which could um, enable better visibility um, as, well as, as well as monitoring and the multi-factor authentication, right, and as well as the secret management side of controls for privilege access management. Um, but Instead of working all these controls in silo, right? Uh, it is important that they need to work together. CISOs are realizing this. Security re leaders are realizing this. And that's where they're looking at how could they bring in identity governance and administration, privilege access management, web access management, which includes a lot of SSO technologies, multi-factor authentication, um, behavioral biometrics, password lists, right? Many of these technologies are playing their own uh, role in bringing in specific controls, but they have to all work together. So because of this reason, we are seeing customers are increasingly looking out for the solutions which could work seamlessly together to, to deliver the obvious value in terms of um, the user experience, in terms of the maturity of the control set that they could deliver, uh, as well as uh, the, the technology did that they, they, could, um, they could avoid. Right. So with all this in mind, uh, we see customers increasingly asking for solutions which will uh, align to this vision of unification of identities. Uh, how do you look at that, uh, Darren? Do you have any different perspective from the industry? Now, I think a lot of what you're saying, Ariane, mirrors precisely the experiences we're, we're having in the field. I think I think interestingly, uh, certainly in the CISO conversations that I have, Clearly, risk reduction is a is a very big part of the equation here, and you know a very compelling reason to to unify identity. But I think operational efficiency is is another one. That, you know, there's so much wastage uh, concerned with managing individual tools. You know, not having those workflows that, as you as you point out, manage the entire life cycle of an identity. There's there there are both operational efficiency gains I think to be had there as well as significant you know, risk reduction as well. So no, we 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 are definitely seeing the same the same kind of trends. So Narian, unfortunately we're, we're about out of time. Uh, really great pleasure to speak with you and thanks once again for being with us. I think uh, certainly food for thought there for for our for our listeners. So thanks once again. Uh, and for now everybody, that's it for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you for having me today.